Здравствуйте, дорогие слушатели! Сегодня наша тема – это драма как род литературы. Драма является из основных трех родов литературы. Однако между драмой и эпосом много общего. Так же, как в эпосе, в драме тоже присутствует сюжет. Как и в эпосе, изображается внешний мир, объективный мир. Характер тоже раскрывается в эпическом и драматическом произведении через поступки, через действия. Однако есть и различия между ними. В драме персонажи действуют на цене без повествователя, а эпос – это повествовательный род литературы, в основе которого лежит повествование. Идея драматического произведения раскрывается через поступки, через действия героев, через их монолог, через их диалог. Драма, как род литературы, делится на три вида – трагедия, комедия и драма. Основные моменты нашей лекции таковы – особенности драматического произведения, сходство между эпосом и драмой, особый характер сюжетного конфликта в драме, отличие драмы от других родов литературы, и, наконец, как Гоул сказал, драма живет только на сцене. Особенности драматического произведения. Драма от греческого слова драма, которое обозначает действие, это один из основных родов литературы, где персонажи самостоятельно действуют на сцене. В отличие от эпоса, где перед читателем как будто сидит автор или повествователь, который рассказывает о событиях или людях со своей точки зрения, в драме отсутствует повествователь. Драматические персонажи действуют на сцене самостоятельно, без рассказчика. Как характер раскрывается в драме? Характер действующих лиц раскрываются через поступки, через диалог или монолог, а иногда и через реплики других персонажей. Другими словами, драме художник или драматург не рассказывает, а показывает. Авторское описание природы, переживаний героев, обстановки, где происходит действие и так далее – Полностью отсутствует драмы. О психологическом состоянии героя, о его чувствах и настроении зрители догадываются, наблюдая его поступки, слушая диалог, в котором он участвует, и его монолог. Зрители воспринимают события, которые показываются на сцене, как события, данного момента, события, которые происходят перед их глазами. Вот почему воздействие драмы на чувства зрителей является таким сильным. Хоство между драмой и эпосом. Драма имеет много общего с эпосом. Сюжет как система событий присутствует не только в эпосе, но и в драме. Так же, как 
эпосе драмы тоже рисуются характеры. Вот почему на первый взгляд многим может показаться, что драма тоже эпическое произведение, только отсутствует авторская речь. Характер сюжетного конфликта в драме. Главная специфика драматического произведения – это присутствие острого напряженного конфликта в сюжете. Сюжетное действие развивается благодаря этому конфликту, благодаря столкновению между персонажами. Драматическое произведение – обычно связана с острыми противоречиями жизни, поэтому сюжет в нем развивается неравномерно, а скачками. Драма живет на цене. Драматические произведения предназначены для постановки на цене. Оно существует прежде всего для театра. Читать пьесу, конечно, можно, но оно становится живой, обретает реальную жизнь только на цене. По словам Гоголя, драма живет только на цене. В зависимости от характера конфликта, драма как литературный род делится на три вида – трагедия, комедия и драма. Особенности сюжетного действия в драме. Характер драматического произведения раскрывается не через сюжет или систему событий, а он раскрывается через действие. Но действие драмы – это не обычное действие, а является особым. Не каждое действие или событие носит драматический характер. Действие драмы особенно драматично. По словам Белинского, драматизм состоит не в одном разговоре, а в живом действии разговаривающих одного на другого. Если, например, двое спорят о каком-нибудь предмете, тут нет не только драмы, но нет и драматического элемента. Но когда спорящие Желая приобрести друг над другом поверхность, стараются затронуть друг друга какие-нибудь стороны характера или зазвечь за славье струны души, и когда через это в споре высказываются их характеры, а конец спора ставит их в новые отношения друг к другу, это уже своего рода. Драма. Единство действия в драме. Характерная черта драматического произведения – это единство действия. В связи с тем, что рамки драматической формы являются более честными, чем в эпосе, изображение широкого взаимодействия между персонажами, как это наблюдается в эпосе, Невозможно в драме. По словам Белинского, простота, немного сложность и единство действия, в смысле единства основной идеи, должно быть одним из главнейших условий драмы. В ней все должно быть направлено к одной цели, к одному намерению. Сюжетные особенности – Драматического произведения. Сюжет драматического произведения не должен быть очень сложным или запутанным. Единство действия в драме требует простого, несложного сюжета. В своем письме Аболенской Достевский писал, «Насчет же вашего намерения извлечь из моего романа драму, то, конечно, я полный согласен. Да, и за правила взял никогда таким попыткам не мешать. Но не могу не заметить вам, что почти всегда подобные попытки не удавались, по крайней мере, полные. Тут речь шла о романе «Преступление и наказание». 
Есть какая-то тайна искусства, продолжает Достевский, у которой эпическая форма никогда не найдет в себе соответствия драматической. Я даже верю, что для разных форм искусства существуют и соответственные им ряды поэтических мыслей, так что одна мысль не может никогда быть выражена в другой, не соответствующей ей форме. Другое дело, если вы как можно более переделаете и измените роман, сохранив от него лишь один какой-нибудь эпизод для переработки в драму или взяв первоначальную мысль, совершенно измените сюжет. Роль действия как основа построения драмы. Как мы знаем, в основе драмы лежит действие. Характер в драматическом произведении раскрывается через действие. Через действие и раскрывается идея произведения. При отсутствии повествователя действие играет решающую роль в драме и занимает центральное место в построении ее сюжета. Отвечая на вопрос, возможно ли считать действие специфической первоосновой драмы, в своей книге Горбунова пишет, что это возможно, ибо речь идет не о действии вообще, как в свойстве всякого литературного произведения, а о драматическом действии, суть которого, с одной стороны, состоит в непосредственной наглядности, а с другой – в его, так сказать, двуединой природе, когда действие приступает к драме и как сторона ее содержания, и как форма воплощения содержания в движении, поступках и борьбе. Односторонность драматического характера. Характеры в драме односторонние, то есть в них преобладает только одно главное человеческое качество, одна основная страсть. Этим драма отличается от повествовательных жанров литературы, особенно от повести и романа. В эпосе показываются разные стороны человеческой жизни. Don't cry. 
It will be all right in time for your wedding. Little peasant. My father was a peasant, it's true. But here I am, in a waistcoat and boots, a pearl out of an oyster. I'm rich now, with a lot of money. But just look at me and examine me, and you'll find that I'm still, still a peasant down to the marrow of my bones. Here, here I've been reading this book, but I understood nothing. I read and fell asleep. The dogs didn't sleep all night. They know that their master's coming. What's the matter with you, Dunyasha? My hands are shaking. I feel so faint. You are too sensitive, Dunyasha. You dress up just like a lady. And you do your hair up like one too. You oughtn't. You should know your place. <coughs> you got the same things. He says they have to go to the dining room. And you will bring me some clothes. Very well. There's a frost outside, three degrees. And the cherry trees are all in the blossom. I can't approve of our climate. I just can't. Our climate is indisposed to favor us, even this one. And here, my life experience. Allow me to tell you that I bought myself a pair of shoes two days ago. And they squeak in a perfectly unbearable manner. What am I to do with them? Go away! You bore me! Some misfortune always happens to me. But I don't complain. I'm used to it. And I can smile. I shall go now. There. There, you see. If I may say so, what circumstances I am in so as to speak. It's even simply marvelous. May I confess, Sir Mala Alexievich, that Epic Hoda has proposed to me. Huh? I don't know what to think about it. He's a nice young man, but every now and then when he begins talking, you can't understand a word he says. I think I like him, and he's madly in love with me. But he's an unlucky man. Every day something happens, and we tease him about it. We call him do it. I think I heard them coming. They are coming. What is the matter with me? I'm cold all over. That's right. There they are. Let's go and meet them. Will she know me? We haven't seen each other for five years. Oh, I'm fainting. I'm just fainting on me. Let's go and do you. Do you remember what room is this, Mom? The nursery! How cold it is! My hands are quite numb. Your room, the white one and the violet one, are just as they used to be, Mama. My dear nursery! Oh, you beautiful room, nursery! I used to sleep in here when I was a baby. And here I am, like a little girl again. And Varya, is just as she used to be. Just like a nun. And I knew the Nyasha. The train was two hours late. There now. How's that for punctuality? My dog eats nuts too. Just think of that now. <laughs> We did have to wait for you. I didn't sleep for four nights on the journey. I'm awfully cold. You went away during Lent, darling, when it was snowing and frosty. But now, oh darling, we did have to wait for you. My joy, my pet. I have to tell you something at once. I can't bear to wait a minute. Something else now. The clerk, Epikoda, proposed to me just after Easter. Always the same. Oh, I must all my hair pin. I don't know what to think about it. He loves me. He loves me so much. My room, my windows, as if I'd never gone away. I'm at home. Tomorrow morning, I'll get up and have a run into the garden. If I could only get 
get some sleep. I didn't sleep for four nights on the journey. I was so bothered. You know, Peter Sergeyevich came two days ago. Peter! He sleeps in the bathhouse. He lives there. He says he was afraid he, was, he would be in the way. I ought to wake him, but Barbara Mikhailovna told me not to. Don't wake him, she said. Dunyasha! Where? Dunyasha, some coffee, quick. Mama wants some. Yes, of course. Well, you've come back. Glory be to the gods. Home again. My darling is back again. Her pretty one is back again. I did have an awful time though. I tell you, I can just imagine it. I went away fully weak. <coughs> it was cold then. <coughs> Snowing. Charlotte talked the whole way and would go on performing her silly tricks. Why did you tie Charlotte on to me? You couldn't go alone, darling, at 17. <coughs> we went to Paris. It was cold there, snowing. Mama stays on the fifth floor. I go to her and find her with a lot of French men, women, and old Abby with a book, and the room filled with tobacco smoke and no comfort at all. Suddenly I feel very sorry for Mama, <coughs> so sorry that I took her head in my arms hugged her and wouldn't let her go. Then Mama started hugging me and crying. Say no more, Anya. Say no more. She's already sold her will, Anya Menton. She's left with nothing. Nothing at all. And I haven't a copay left either. We only just managed to get her. But Mama just doesn't seem to understand. We had dinner at the railway station. She ordered for all expensive things and tipped the waiters a ruble each. Even Charlotte wants her share. Yasha too. It's just too bad. Mama's got a footman now. Yasha. We brought him here with us. I saw the wretch. Oh, this <coughs> has the interest been paid. Not much chance of that. Oh, God. Oh, the place will be sold in August. Oh, God gracious! Oh! I'd like to. Varda has he proposed to you. But he loves you. Why don't you make up your mind? What are you waiting for? I think it will all come to nothing. He is a busy man, and I'm not his affair. He pays no attention to me. Bless the man, I don't want to see him. But everybody talks about our marriage. Everybody congratulates me. And there's nothing in it at all. It's all like a dream. You've got a brooch like a bee. Mama bought it. In Paris, we went up in a balloon. My darling's come back. My pretty one's come back. I go about all day thinking to myself, if only you could marry a rich man, then I'd be happy. I could go away somewhere by myself and to Kiev, to Moscow, and so on, from one holy place to another. I'd tramp and tramp. That would be splendid. The birds are singing in the garden. What time is it now? It must be about three. Oh, time you went to sleep, my darling. Father, 
died six years ago. And a month later, my brother Grisha was drowned in the river. Such a dear little boy of seven. Mama could bear it. She went away, away without looking around. Oh, how I understand her if only she knew. And Peter Trafima was Grisha's tutor then. He might tell her. The, the mistress is going to have some food here. Is the coffee ready? You, Mr. Cree. Oh, dear me. Oh, you, Grumbler. So, <coughs> back from Paris. The master went to Paris once in a carriage. What are you talking about, Pierce? Beg your pardon? Oh, <laughs> the mistress is home again. Well, I've, I've lived long to see her. I don't care if I die now. Let me remember now. Red into the corner, twice into the center. Right into the pocket. Once upon a time, you and I, both used to sleep in this room. And now I'm 51. It does seem strange. Yes. Time flies. What flies? I said that time does fly. I shall go to bed now. Good night, now, My sweet little one. Aren't you glad to be home? I just can't get over it. Yes, Mama. Good night, Uncle. God be with you. How you do resemble your mother. You are just like her at her age, dear Mom. She's awfully tired. It's a very long journey. Well, sirs, it's getting on for three. About time you went. You are just the same as ever, Varya. I'll have some coffee now. Then we'll all go. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Pierce. Thank you, my lovely old man. I'm used to coffee. I drink it day and night. I'll go and see if they've brought in all the luggage. Is it me who is sitting here? I want to jump about and wave my arms. But suppose I'm dreaming? God knows, I love my own country. I love it deeply. I couldn't look out of the railway carriage. I cried so much. Still, I must have my coffee. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're still alive. <laughs> the the day before yesterday. He doesn't hear well. I'll have to go up to Kharkov by the five o'clock train. I'm awfully sorry. I should like to have a look at you. To gossip a little. You are as fine looking as ever. Even finer looking, dressed in Paris fashion. <laughs> Confound it all. Your brother, Leonid Andreevich, says I'm a snob, a usurper. But that is absolutely nothing to me. Let him talk. Only I do wish that you, 
would believe in me as you once did. That your wonderful touching eyes would look at me as they did before. Merciful God, my father was a serf of your father and your grandfather, but you, you, Lubov Andreevna, has done so much for me once upon a time that I've forgotten it all. I love you as if you belong to my family. And even more. I can't sit still. I'm not in a state to do it. I'll never survive this happiness. You can laugh at me. I'm a silly woman. Oh, my dear little cupboard. My little table. The nurse died while you were away. Yes, bless her soul. I learned about her in the letter. And Anastasia died too. Peter Kasoy has left me. And now he lives in town with commissioner of police. My daughter Dashanka sent her up. I have to say something very pleasant, very delightful to you, dear lady. I haven't much time. I have to go out at once. But I'll tell you all about it in two to three words. As you already know, the cherry orchard is to be sold to pay off your debts, and the sale is fixed for August 22. But you needn't be alarmed, madam. You may sleep in peace. Here is my plan. Please, please attend it carefully. Your estate is only 13 miles away from town. And the railway runs by. And if, if the land by the river and the cherry orchard are broken up into building lots and then leased off for villas, you will get at least 25,000 rubles of your profit out of it. How utterly absurd. I don't understand you at all, your Malanek Savage. 25,000 rubles for each Siachin from the leaseholders at the very least. And if, if you advertise now, I'm willing to bet there won't be a single plot left by the autumn. <coughs> Tell I'll go. In a word, let's say, I congratulate you. Only, of course, you'll have to clean up a little and put things straight. For instance, pull down all the old buildings house which is of no use to anyone, and cut down the old cherry orchard, of course. Cut it down? My dear man, you must excuse me, but you don't understand anything at all. If there's anything interesting or remarkable in the whole province, it's this. Cherry orchard, of course. The only remarkable thing about the cherry orchard? is that it's very large. It bears fruits every other year. And then too, you do not know what to do with them. Nobody buys them. This orchard is mentioned in the encyclopedic dictionary. If we do not think of anything and do not make up our minds to anything, and on August 22, both the cherry orchard and the whole land will be up for auction. Make up your mind, please. There is no other way out, I swear. I swear it again. In the old days, uh, 40 or uh, 50 years ago, uh, they used to dry the cherries and uh, soak them and, uh, and they jammed them. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, it, it used to happen. Big white fees. Yes. <coughs> And the jams were uh, sent in, in carts uh, to Moscow and, and, and Kharkov. And the money and the cherries, the cherries were soft, uh, juicy. Scented. They knew the way how to... What was the way? They, they 
forgotten. Nobody remembers. Till now, there were only gentries and laborers living in the village. Now new people have arrived. All towns now. Even the smaller ones are surrounded by willow. And it's safe to say that in 20 years' time, the willow resident will be all over the place. As for now, he sits on his balcony and has tea. But it may well come to pass that he will begin to cultivate his patch of land. And then, your cherry orchard will be rich, happy, splendid. Uh, what's rotten? There are two telegrams for you, Mama. They are from Paris. I've done with Paris. And do you remember, Luba, how old this case is? A week ago, I opened the bottom drawer. I looked and saw figures burnt out in it. This case was made exactly a hundred years ago. What do you think of that? What? We could celebrate its jubilee. It hasn't a soul of its own, but still, say what you will, and it's a fine bookcase. A hundred years. Just think of that now. Yes, it's a real thing. My dear and honored case, I congratulate you on the occasion of, on the occasion of hundred years, during which you have upheld virtues and faith in a better future to the generations of our races, educating us up to the ideals of goodness and to the knowledge of common consciousness. Yes! You are just the same as ever, Leon. Off the white on to the right, into the corner pocket. Red ball goes into the middle pocket. It's time I went. Will you take a pill now? You oughtn't to take your medicines, dear madam. They do you neither harm nor good. Give them, dear madam. There. You are off your head. I have taken all the pills. Come and I They, they came in half. The time in Easter, and they ate half a pail full of, of, of cucumbers. What's he driving at? He has been mumbling away for three years now. <laughs> he used to that. Then I'll do Excuse me, Charlotte Ivanov. I haven't said how do you do to you yet. Let people kiss your hand, then they want your elbow, then your shoulder. And then? My <laughs> <laughs> lunch ran out today. Charlotte, show us a trick. Charlotte, do us a trick. No, not now. I want to go to bed. <laughs> we shall see each other in three weeks. Now, goodbye. It's time to go. I do not want to go away. I have some very important work. If you make up your mind about the willas, then do let me know. And I'll raise a loan of 50,000 rubles at once. Do think about it seriously, dear lady. Go! Please do go now. I'm going, I'm going. Snob. Oh, oh still I. Beg your pardon. He's Maria's young man. Maria is going to marry him. Don't talk too much, Uncle. Why not, Maria? I should be very glad. He is a good man. <coughs> and to speak the honest truth, he's a worthy man. And my daughter Dashanka also says that. She says a lot of things. But still, dear madam. If you could lend me 240 rubles to pay the interest on the mortgage tomorrow morning. 
They haven't got it. They haven't got it. It's quite true. I have nothing at all. I'll find it. <laughs> all right. I never lose hope. I used to think I'm a dead man. Everything is lost. When lo and behold, a railway was built over my land. And they paid me for it. Something might just happen today or tomorrow. Dashenka made me 20,000 rubles. She's got a lot to take it. The coffee is all gone. We can go to bed. You, you worn the wrong trousers for a again. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? I'm asleep. <sighs> the sun has risen already. It isn't cold. Look, Mama. What lovely trees. And the air. The starlings are singing. Whole gardens white. Do you remember, Lilba? There, there goes the long avenue, straight, straight like a thread trap. It shines on moonlit night. Do you remember? You haven't forgotten. Oh, my childhood. Days of my innocence. In this nursery, I used to sleep. I used to look out from here into the orchard. Happiness used to wake with me every morning. And then, it was just as it is now. Nothing has changed. It's all, all white. Oh, my orchard. After the dark autumns and the cold winters. You are young again, full of happiness. The angels of heaven haven't left you. Oh, if only I could take my heavy burden off my bosom and shoulders. If only I could forget my past. Yes, and they'll sell this altar to pay off the debts. How strange it seems. Look. There's my dead mother going in the orchard, dressed in white. That's she. Where? God bless you, Mama. There's nobody there. I thought I saw somebody. On the right, at the turning by the summer house, a white little tree bent down, looking just like a woman. What a marvelous garden. White masses of flowers. The blue sky. Lubov Andreevna, I only want to show myself. And I'll go away. I was told to wait till morning. But I didn't have the patience. It's Peter Trafima. Peter Trafima? Once the tutor of your Grisha? Have I changed so much? That's enough. That's enough, Luba. I told you, Peter, to wait till tomorrow. My Grisha. My boy. Grisha. My son. What are we to do, Mama? It's the will of God. <coughs> it's all right. It's all right. My boy is dead. He was drowned. Why? Why, my friend? Anya is asleep in there. I'm speaking so loudly. Making such a noise. Well, Peter, what's made you look so bad? Why have you grown so old? In the train. An old woman called me a decayed gentleman. <laughs> you were quite a boy then. A nice little student. And now, your head is not at all thin. And you wear spectacles. Are you really still a student? I suppose. 
I should always be a student. Well, let's go to bed. And you have grown older. Yes, we've got to go to bed. Ugh, my gout. I'll stay the night here if only you go and Rayevna. You could get me 240 rubles to pay the interest in the mortgage tomorrow morning. Still the same story? 240 rubles to pay the interest? I haven't any money, dear man. It's a small sum. I will give it back. Well, then Leonard will give it to you. Let him have it, Leonard. By all means, hold up your hand. Why not? He wants it. He'll give it back. My sister hasn't lost the habit of throwing money about. Stand up! Do! You smell of poetry! <laughs> You're just the same as ever, Leonid Andreevich. Really? What's he saying? Your mother's come from the village and wants to see you. She's been waiting in the servants' room since yesterday. Bless the woman. Shameless man! A lot of youths there is in her coming. She might have come tomorrow just as well. Mother hasn't altered a scrap. She is as she always was. She'd give away everything if the idea only entered her head. Yes. <coughs> if there is any illness for which people offer many remedies, then you may be sure that particular illness is incurable, I think. I work my brains to the hardest. I have several remedies. Very many. And that really means Huh, none at all. Well, it would be nice to inherit a fortune from somebody. It would be nice to marry our Anya to a rich man. It would be nice to go to Yashlav and try my luck with my aunt, the Countess. My aunt is rich, very rich. If only God would help us. Oh, come on. My aunt is very rich. But she doesn't like us. My sister, in the first place, married an advocate, not a noble. She not only married a man who was not a noble, but behaved in such a manner which cannot be called as proper. She's nice and kind and charming, and I'm very fond of her. But still, say what you will, and you will have to say that she's wicked. You can see that in her slightest movement. Anya's in the doorway. Really? That's curious. Ah, something's got into my right eye. I can't see properly out of it. And on Thursday when I was in the district court... Why aren't you in there, Anya? Can't sleep. It's no good. My darling, my child, you're not my niece. You're my all. Believe in me. Believe. I do believe you, uncle. Everybody loves you and respects you. But you ought to say nothing, no more than that. What were you saying just now about my mother, your own sister? Why did you say those things? Yes, yes. It was awful. Save me, my God. Just now, I, I made a speech in front of a bookcase. It was so silly. And only when I finished it, I realized how silly it was. Really, Uncle? You ought to say less. Be quiet, that's all. You'd be so much happier in yourself if you just keep quiet. All right, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. But let's talk business. On Tuesday, when I was at the district court, a lot of us met there together. And we started talking about this, that, and a lot of other things. And now I think I can arrange a loan to pay the interest into the bank. If only God would help us. I'll go and talk to them about it again. Your mother will have to talk to Lepakin. <laughs> he, of course, won't refuse. And when you've rested, you'll go to Yaslov to the Countess, your grandmother. And you see, we'll have three irons in the fire. And we'll be saved. We'll pay up the interest. I'm certain about it. I swear on my honor on anything you will, that the estate will not be sold. I swear on my happiness. Here's my hand. You may call me a dishonorable wretch if I let it go to auction. I swear by all I am. How good and clever you are, uncle. I'm happy now. I'm happy. All's well. Hey, yo. 
fear me, Dan Dredrich. Don't you fear God? When are you going to go to bed? Soon, soon. You go away, please. I'll change myself. All right, children. Bye-bye. I'll give you the details tomorrow. But now, let's go to bed. I'm a man of the 80s. And people don't face those years much. But still, I can say that I've suffered for all my beliefs. The peasants don't love me for nothing, I assure you. We must learn to know our peasants. We ought to know how... You're doing it again, Uncle. Be quiet, Uncle. Be in an I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Off to push them into the corner. Tell them all when you leave. I'm quite chill now. But I don't want to go to Yaroslav. I don't like grandmother. But I'm calm now. Thanks to Uncle. It's time to go to sleep. I'll go. There's been an unpleasantness here while you were away. In the old servant's part of the house, as you know, where the old people live, little Olivine and Polia, Istigne and Carp as well. They started letting some tramps or the others spend the night there. I said nothing. <coughs> then they said I had ordered them to be fed only on peas and nothing else. Out of meanness, you see. And it was all Istigne's doing. Very well, I thought. If that's what the matter is, just you wait. So I call Istigne. He comes. What is this, Istegne? You old fool! Anya? Anya, dear. Oh, she's dropped off. Let's go to bye-bye. <coughs> come along now. Итак, драма, как род литературы, отличается и от других родов тем, что в драме персонажи самостоятельно действуют на сцене без повествователя. Как Николай Гогол сказал, драма живет только на сцене. Драма, как род литературы, делится на три вида – трагедия, комедия и драма. В трагедии изображается непримиримый конфликт между человеком и окружающей его средой. В комедии показываются какие-то смешные стороны человеческой жизни – Высмеиваются какие-то пороки общества и недостатки. В драме сюжетный конфликт имеет особый характер. Финал драмы не всегда является трагическим или комическим. 